What's going on YouTube? This is what would Josh do and this video is a lot more positive than my last one. So some of our apps updated and we're going to be installing CyanogenMod 11. So I'm going to go ahead and back up my apps before I wipe this device because when you install CyanogenMod 11, you will be wiping your device or you have to, otherwise there's going to be issues. One of the biggest reasons I'm excited about CyanogenMod 11 as you'll see that when you're on Wi-Fi at home, your little 3G icons lit up. And also, I've gotten 16 down with uh, 3G here in Kansas City, and that's not 3G, that's actually HSPA+. There is an app called Signal Check. I have the pro version, my wife only has the light version. But basically, it confirms that we are actually on HSPA+. This thing is has not updated to let us know that it, that it's on HSPA+. So what I'm going to do is, uh, when I install signs from my 11, hopefully that little icon will change into an H. If it doesn't, oh well, it's not the end of the world. So one of the things I recommend doing is oh, purchasing SD Made Pro. I promise you it's worth it. I bought it on my wife's phone. I recently rooted another family member's phone. I went to Walmart, bought a little $10 Google Play card for actually two different phones, my uh, my wife's sister's phone and my wife's mom's phone, and I bought this app on their phone. So I go to App Cleaner, and then you just scan. Um, it'll say like, you know, one gig or 600 megabytes, or it'll say like how much storage can be freed up. And in this situation, we're looking at 49. This phone had like 740 megabytes when I cleared it the other day. So you'll just hit this little clear button and all the cache and stuff will get deleted and removed. I can tell you that Google Plus is the worst app. I've had it sit at this, pause for a moment, and what I would do is I would open up my apps, like go to Application Manager, and I would click for stop on Google Plus, and then I would clear the data for it. I'd come back to this app, I would uh, scan, and then I would remove it again. So without SD Made Pro, the Pro version, you cannot clear the apps like this. It's not that easy. Basically, what this is doing is it's making it where Titanium Backup won't sit on a specific app for a very, very long time because it's backing up all the cache and all the other unnecessary data. So also, since some of the apps updated, I'm going to go ahead and go to this batch icon, and then I'm going to go to backup all user apps, and then I'm going to hit the little checkbox. And this is going to take just a moment, and it's going to backup everything. That app is amazing. You need to go to the Google Play Store right now, and you need to try out that app. <laughs> or make a mental note and install the app after you install CyanogenMod. It is amazing. I have it on literally every device I have. My daughter's tablet and just, just everything. It's amazing. All right, that took a little bit of time, but it's finished. Also, you're gonna to need to go to schedules and then sync to Dropbox. If that option is not there, press menu, preferences, and then check Enable Dropbox, Enable Box, or Google Drive. You can use all three or you can use one, it's up to you. And then when you go back, you'll see this option right here, Sync to Dropbox. Hit Run. If it's your very first time, it'll say, do you want to allow Titanium Backup access to your Dropbox? So you'll just grant it and then it'll automatically go here. If this is your very first time doing this, it's going to take a while because it's going to upload the however many gigs of data that you have on your internal storage or your external if you have an SD card, which this device does not have one, and it will sync that to the cloud. And here it's going to tell me uh, the differences. Like it's going to delete older backups and put the newer backups on there. So in a minute here, it's going to tell me what it needs to change. We're doing this because when we wipe this phone, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a more advanced, thorough, completely reset this phone. I want all 16 gigs of the storage available to me, so I'm going to be wiping the internal storage. As you can see right there, that's not too bad. It's only got 141 megabytes. 
you can use a USB OTG Ethernet adapter. I made a video on one. Uh, it's called How to Connect Your Transformer Prime to an Ethernet Cable. Um, and basically, it's the same thing, except instead of a USB port, you would use a micro USB OTG cable. I posted a picture on Instagram. I can go ahead and put it up now. And yeah, essentially, you're just giving your Moto G wired Ethernet. And I can download at a full... Well, I'll just show you. We're going to see just how fast we can get our internet on our little Moto G here using a pluggable USB 2.0 Ethernet adapter. Oh, looks like I'm getting 108. So that means I can also upload at those crazy speeds as well. I'm going to go ahead and let this finish and then I'll be back. If for any reason this fails on you, like you go from Wi-Fi to 3G or 4G or anything like that, just simply click the run button and it'll pick up where it left off. So if it was uploading, you know, 200 megabytes and you had 30 left and it stopped, like your phone died or, you know, whatever reason it got interrupted, you can just hit the run button and it'll go, well, see, this number is different from the number before. So if we press back, it'll cancel this. And then if we go to run it again, it'll only sync three megabytes. So it's really cool. All right, it is finished. Now, all we got to do is when we reset the phone and wipe the internal storage, we open it, we reinstall the titanium backup app, and then we go to schedules, we hit run, and that'll see that the internal storage, the, the, the folder is empty, and it'll download all the stuff that we have in there. Alternatively, if you don't have the pro version of titanium backup, if your upload speed is really, really slow, for whatever reason, you can actually get one of these little guys right here and just put a little micro SD card in it. Or you can get something like this, where it's a leaf bridge. I have two separate videos, one on this leaf bridge 3.0 and one on this little Minova SD card reader. If you're interested in these, click the links, watch the videos, and in under the video, there'll be a link to purchase it if you're interested. I like both of them, but this one has a smaller footprint. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. And by smaller footprint, I simply mean this guy right here is super long when you have it plugged in. <laughs> Plus I like the little light that flashes on this one. If your port's like this, then you don't see the light that's on this side. So that's also a bummer. All right, now we can open up any file explorer app. Uh, we can use ES File Explorer, for example. And then on here, we can go to our titanium backup folder that's on our internal storage, hit copy, and then go up here and choose USB disk and then paste it and it'll take all the stuff that we have and it'll put it onto the SD card right here so in theory if you have a little 8 gig Moto G uh, that 1.59 gigabytes total that's taking up our internal storage we can have it on, on a little 32 gig SD card or an 8 gig SD card whatever size SD card you want as long as it's bigger than you know like 2 gigs or something and SD cards are really really cheap so if you don't want to keep all your backups on your internal storage and use up all that valuable space you definitely need to consider getting one of these there's just no doubt about it at all or you can just go with this little solution right here plug it in and this is a 64 gig one so uh, 64 gigs of expandable storage when you have a little 8 or 16 gig Moto G. So these little things are absolutely essential. And you see how fast that's moving to the SD card at about 10 to 11 megabytes per second on average. So it's just taking a very, very short time to move everything from the internal storage to the external storage. And now I am copying, but obviously you could hit move and move it if you wanted to. I'm really, really curious to see if SignageMod does away with the little Wi-Fi and 3G icons because that just simply takes up more space in your status bar. And on every other phone I've seen, if you're connected to Wi-Fi, it totally ditches the 3G signal or 4G signal and all you have is your little signal bars and then your Wi-Fi icon. So I'm really excited to see if SignageMod fixes that. Also, after you're done backing up your apps, I recommend going through ones that have 
options to back up your stuff to do that as well. So for example, Nova Launcher, it, there's an option in here to go to backup and import, choose backup, and then hit OK. And it'll make a backup of your icons. So like the way the home screen is right now, all of the widgets on here, the calendar, all that will be restored. Uh, the icons without little text underneath them, that'll be restored. Everything will be restored. There's also a backup and restore option in this Twitter app right here called Plume that I really, really like. If you go to settings, you will go down here and you'll see uh, import export and you can choose export and then press OK. Now all of the logins, all of the accounts that are within Plume, all of the settings, all the options, everything is backed up to the SD card and you don't have to have root to restore them. Anytime I'm given the option to back up and restore without using a root app like Titanium Backup, I do it. So also you'll want to go to ES File Explorer one more time and you'll want to go to your SD card and you'll want to go through here and you'll want to go to data. And also if you have pictures on your internal storage, you'll want to press on that. And if you have anything on here that you might want to save later on, like Zedge, for example, she really likes that app. Uh, yeah, we can just, we can also go to like media, ringtones, we can go all that and hit copy. And then one more time, go to USB disk, hit paste, and it's going to move all that stuff to the external storage. That way when we wipe the internal storage, if you do, uh, you can simply take those from the external storage and put them back on your internal storage. And it's, it's pretty fast, and there's hardly any waiting. So there we go. Also, uh, before you install SignGemod, you need custom recovery. I highly recommend Twerp. This is a 100% stock ROM. I just have the exposed framework right there, and I have uh, advanced power menu. So it's just an app that uses the exposed framework. And I didn't mean to take a screenshot, but you can if you want to. Reboot to recovery and then press OK. And it'll reboot me into recovery. I just want to show you what recovery we're on and then how to update it. Because when I first installed recovery, swiping was a little bit broken. The touchscreen was kind of off. But there is a newer version and we're going to see if it fixes all of that. And also, like I said, I want to confirm that we are... Okay, it's not getting me into custom recovery for some reason, so we're going to go ahead and hold the power button down until it shuts off. And then we're going to hold volume down and power. Okay, and then when we're in here, we're going to hit volume down, and then we're going to hit volume up. And hopefully this will get us into our custom recovery, because we should have custom recovery still. I don't see how it would have not be there anymore. Okay, for some reason, it's not wanting to get me to my recovery, but I was on 2631, I believe, and as of a couple days ago, it updated to 2633. Obviously, if you're watching this video later on, it could update to like 270, which is what most devices are on as of today. All right, so how we're going to update custom recovery is we're going to go open up the, any web browser you want to. You can use Chrome, you can use Dolphin, whatever you want to use. And then you can go to bit.ly slash Moto G Twerp. Moto G Twerp is all caps. And then press the enter button and it should take you to the XDA thread that I made the bit.ly thing linked to. And you'll just go down here and then you'll click on download. And when you press on it, it says starting download. Now it's done downloading, you'll need to go to the Play Store and download an app called Recovery Tools by DSL Nexus. It's right here. It's free. It does require root permission. If you do not have root, then you need to use Fastboot and you need to Fastboot Flash Recovery, Open Script, whatever it's called, the name of the recovery. You can just type the first like three letters, hit tab, and it'll auto-complete whatever files in your platform tools folder. So we're going to open it up. It should ask us to grant it root permission. If it does not, then you're not rooted and it's not gonna work. So this has stock recovery for some reason. I don't know how that happened, but you can choose backup, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit, I know the risk. We're gonna go to flash recovery from storage, go to our download and you'll see 2633 Falcon. So press on that 
and then yes please. That'll flash the latest tour recovery as of this video. You can hit yes please to get into recovery um, quickly and easily, but I'm going to go ahead and power the phone off. And then we're simply going to hold the volume down and the power button. And then you can let go of power and you'll get to this screen right here. Hit volume down one time, press volume up, and we should now get into Twerp Recovery instead of the stock one. I have no idea how that happened. There we go. We are in Team Win Recovery. Now at this point, I do highly recommend going to Backup, choose Data, System, and Boot. Please do not choose Cache. You're just wasting your time and your storage. Um, and then go to Storage, and if you have one of these guys, you would choose USB OTG, which it's not there. I don't know why that's not an option. So enable compression and then swipe to back up. It looks like the touch screen's a lot better on 2633 than it was before. So swipe to back up and that'll make a backup of your phone. If you hit storage and then say 2634, 270, whatever it comes out and you see you, uh, USB OTG, choose that option. For some reason, it's not there for me. That's also a way of verifying that you can put the ROM on here and flash it because uh, you'll see the files on there. If you don't see the files on there, then don't wipe your phone. Otherwise, I hope you know ADB and how to ADB push stuff. So we're going to plug that in and then go to install. And hopefully, it's not showing up. I don't know why. So I'm going to need to take the ROM and put it on the internal storage. Hold on just a second. Hopefully when you go to do this, Twerp will have updated to a newer version and there will be a USB OTG option like there was on my Nexus 7 and all my other devices. Okay, you're gonna need two things. You're gonna need the ROM and you're gonna need the G apps. So I, I can show you how to do that. Just go up here to your URL bar and whatever browser you want and then type in git.cm and then press the little enter check button whatever and then on here you can go to request full desktop site and then you'll go to download page and then you'll go down here until you see falcon now they have unified the build um, if you want to watch my video talking about unified and how that works I'll try to link to it in the description anyways uh, it's all Falcon now. It's one phone. The dual SIM is going to be added soon, they said, in the future. So if you have a dual SIM version, it'll all be unified with this one. So like three different versions of the Moto G are all one build. So you'll go to the Falcon, and then I highly recommend choosing a monthly snapshot. Every month, that's going to update. Next month, it could be version M5. So instead of updating each and every night, which gets very annoying, the monthlies are also more stable than the nightly. So I, I just, I highly recommend going with a monthly snapshot if it's available. If you see CM11 RC1, RC0, or anything RC in the future, flash that instead of a monthly if it's a CM11 version. Release candidates will be much, much more stable than a monthly snapshot and way more stable than a nightly. So it goes nightly, monthly, release candidate, and then stable. If you see CM11 and then dot zip, that's a stable version. If it doesn't say nightly, snapshot, experimental, or released or RC, release candidate, then it's a stable version, flash that. So you'll just wanna go with the most stable version of CM11 on your device. So we're gonna go with M4, and then we can use ES Downloader. It's, it has a built-in download uh, thing where it just tells you the speed at which it's downloading the file at, and it'll put it on the SD card. If you don't have that app, then you can just use uh, hit Chrome when it pops up, and Chrome's built-in download manager will download the file, and you'll be good to go. You're not done yet. You need to go back to Chrome, and you need to search G apps. You'll want to go to the one that says wiki.cyanogemod.org. That's going to be the best one to choose. And then you're going to go down here, 
and you're going to see CM11. And you'll want to download from any of these three options. I'm going to choose Android File Host because that's the fastest one and their servers are not always down like Goo and other things. So Goo has been down for a very, very long time. So if they do come back up later on, good for them. But Android File Host is the most reliable one at the moment. So in this situation, like I was saying earlier, it used Chrome and now it's downloading. That'll take just a second to finish and then we'll continue flashing. All right, this zip's done downloading here in just a second. There we go. You need one more thing. This is the last thing you need. Just Google Super SU and then search for it. You'll come across an XDA thread right here. And then you'll zoom in and you'll go down here until you find CWM. I don't know why Chrome does that for some reason with XDA, but it messes it up. You'll go to CWM, Twerp, Mobile Odin. Click that. It'll take you to the next page. And from there, you hit Chrome. And then you'll go down here and you'll see this Update Super SU. And you can just hit Chrome again. And it'll start downloading that. So now both of these are done. Basically, Super SU is just a much better way of obtaining root access. If you don't flash Super SU, Titanium Backup and other apps are going to give you um, a little error about your super user binary and having you know issues and they're going to recommend using some other app of granting and allowing and denying and stuff like that root access to apps so that's what super su is going to do for us now i showed you how to power the device off hold the volume down and power button and then let go of power to get to recovery so now we're going to choose this easy app that way we don't have to like wait for the thing to power down and then hold buttons and do all that this is just a much easier way of doing it or you can use recovery tools and there's a rebooter option that'll reboot you into recovery or you can use titanium backup and if you hit the little menu button it's also there's several ways of getting into recovery or you can use a super simple app called quick boot which will you know you can place a little shortcut on your desk on your home screen and easily get into recovery there's tons of different ways so now we need to go to wipe and we need to go to advanced wipe we need to choose Dalvik, Data, Cache, and System. You need those four options right there. Normally, I would choose my internal storage as well. That way, I have all 16 gigs of storage available to me after I flash a ROM. But since USB OTG is not working at the moment, I cannot do that. So swipe to wipe. And this will take just a second. It'll be done. The touchscreen is so much better on 2633. It's insane. It's actually responding, and I don't have to sit there and push on something a hundred times to get it to do something. So under our download folder, we'll see that CM11 snapshot M4. We'll see Google Apps, and we'll see SuperSU. We need to go with this one first, and then we need to press Add More Zips. We need to choose the G Apps, and then Add More Zips and then update Super SU. So we need a total of three files. So we got three out of 10, and we'll just swipe to confirm flash. This will install CyanogenMod. This will install the Google apps, the G apps, which are required to have the Google Play Store and other Google apps, and it'll also install Super SU. So we won't have to do that later on when apps are like, hey, your binary is having issues. Can you please flash something else? <laughs> So just do it now, get it out of the way, and be done with it. And I can go ahead and just unplug this since it's not doing me any good at all. All right, we are good to go. We can hit Reboot System. Now, we did move our Titanium Backup folder to this thing. We also moved our Data folder, which contained our Nova Launcher backups and the Plume backup and any other backups that you did when you did this to your phone. So you can plug this back in and you know access the files on it. If for some reason Sajimod is having issues when you put this in and it doesn't pop up that you inserted a USB storage device, you can download Stick Mount from the Google Play Store. Chainfire is amazing. He's also the guy that did Super SU, the DSLR controller app that I'm using on my Nexus 7 right now to see what my DSLR is seeing. And he makes a ton of other awesome apps. So definitely check out Super SU Pro and Stick Mount Pro. 
So those are the two apps that you almost like. <laughs> I cannot recommend them enough. All right, that did not take very long at all. I know I need to cut my nails. They're getting a little bit long. So, Sanjamad, you'll choose your country, and I'm in the United States, so I'm going to hit next. If you don't have a Sanjamad account, I recommend creating one. Oh, they did. Look at that. When you install Sanjamad, you'll get a little HSPA Plus symbol up there instead of it just saying 3G. And, uh, you know, you're running an app like Signal Check Pro to verify that you're actually on HSPA+. Plus. Now, mine just switched to 3G, but as you might have saw before I zoomed in, <laughs> it was on HSPA+. Plus. The Sajamod account basically just has a list of all your devices with Sajamod on them. You can locate those devices, you can wipe those devices, and etc. If you just absolutely refuse to create one, you can hit skip. And then it'll ask you if you have a Google account. Just hit yes, and you'll sign in. If you entered in the correct information, you'll get to this screen right here. I always uncheck this box out of preference. It's going to restore your device, and it's going to tell you your name, and you're just going to hit the next button. Actually, it's going to show you right here, access to my location, GPS satellites, Wi-Fi. I hit next. Uh, I am central time, so it's correct. And setup is complete. Hit finish. Hit OK, hit OK, and what we're going to do is drag this down. We're going to go to brightness, and we're just going to move it up there. There we go. Now we have Cyanogen Mod on our device, and there's that little H symbol again. There you have it. When you drag down from this side, you'll see you get your quick toggles here. If you drag down from this side, you'll have your notifications. I don't like that. So I go to my settings, and then I go to interface, I go to the quick settings panel, I choose quick pull down, and I turn it off. Now if I grab my phone with my right hand and I drag down from this side, it'll still be my stuff there. So that's really, really cool. No matter which side you, you bring it down from, it'll be your notifications. And you can also use two fingers to get to there, or you can drag it down, press this little button, and it flips it around. Also, other stuff that I do is I go to interface, status bar, for battery, I like to choose circle, and then I like to check the little box with the percentage. Now there's a little number that says, hey, you have 74% left. Instead of, like you saw earlier, having something like battery widget reborn or something in your notification bar ticking up space, now it's right there. And also, as you notice, there's no little 3G symbol right next to the signal because we're on Wi-Fi and it's unnecessary to have that there when you're connected to Wi-Fi. So this is immediately fixing some of my biggest complaints with the stock ROM on this phone. We're almost done here. I'm just running you through all the things that I do when I first set up SignJump on my phone. Also, double tap to sleep is an amazing feature. So basically all you do is double tap the status bar and your phone goes to sleep. And you can do it from the lock screen. Just double tap on the thing right there and bam, your phone goes to sleep. It's just a feature I like a lot. Also, brightness controls where you drag this down and you can raise the brightness or lower it. Also, more things that you can go through here is like the quick settings panel like you saw us do, notification drawer, expanded desktop. You can go through here and you can customize the buttons down here like the home, recent apps, and back button. You can add more buttons by pressing the unlock icon and then adding more buttons. And also, if you don't want any issues with Titanium Backup, you'll need to go to Security. You'll need to go to Verify Apps, uncheck that, check Unknown Sources, hit OK. I also verify that Make Passwords Visible is not checked. And then you'll need to go to Developer Options, which isn't there. So go to About Phone, go down here until you see Build Number, and keep tapping on that. Now when you go back, you'll see Developer Options, and in here, one thing you're going to notice is when you hold the power button down, you don't have like advanced reboot options. You can only just simply reboot your phone. If you hit this button right here or check that box, now you'll see recovery and bootloader, which is really, really cool. And people that know what they're doing need to do that. Also, go to root access and please choose that to disabled. Uh, you're going to have root. All you got to do is open up the Super SU app that we flash in recovery and then also check Android debugging, hit OK, 
and then I don't like it when I plug my phone in and it takes up more space on my status bar with a little icon that says I'm in debugging mode. So check that box right there. And in here, you're pretty much done. I mean, there's nothing else in here to change and that, you know, that's mandatory. So now when you open up the Super SU app right here, it's going to say install an add-on. Yes, do that. So no thanks, I'm already following you. Go to your settings, and then I uncheck re-authentication. Basically, anytime an app has an update, if that box is checked, it's gonna keep asking you for root over and over and over again. But the good thing about it is, if it's checked and you uninstall an app, it will delete the root permission for that app. So if you uncheck that, sometimes you'll go to your apps here, and you'll see an app without an icon. That just basically means you granted that app root access before, but now that app is no longer there and you'll need to press on it and then hit forget. Also go back to your settings, go down here, and then you'll need to make sure that uh, respect CM root settings, uncheck that. When we hit disabled, now this will completely ignore that. And you'll also wanna go down here, press on this, and then you'll know that it's done because you cannot do it again. And there you go, you are done. So if we open up an app like titanium backup for example and we hit grant which has root permission now we won't get any error about our super user binary that we need to enable usb debugging that we can't uh, install apps because of unknown sources i mean this phone is completely set up now you just need to reinstall your apps which as you can see it is putting them all back on there so now oh look nova launcher always now Nova Launcher's on here. If we plug in our little flash drive here, or SD card, we can basically take the files that are on here, the data folder, and we can use ES File Explorer, and we can move it from the external storage to the internal storage on the device. And we can also take the Titanium Backup thing. Oh, and this is how you would do that. If you open Titanium Backup, if you want it to always go to your external storage instead of your internal, you'll see right there it says emulated. We can change that by going to menu, preferences, and then backup folder location, hit detect, whole device, and it should come up with two options. So without stick mount, it is recognizing the USB disk right there. And then just hit use current folder. And I'm gonna choose no, cause I don't want it to move everything. Go back. And when Titanium Backup relaunches, all of the apps that you wanna back up will get backed up to here. All the apps that you wanna restore, like down here, the ones that with the line through, meaning they're not installed at the moment, you can just press on it, choose restore, and then app plus data. So you're not using up any of the internal storage on your device if you moved the Titanium Backup folder from your internal storage to your external storage right here. I'm just stressing this because of the fact that some people have an eight gig or a 16 gig and they don't have much storage left over. And this is a solution of getting all that storage back. The only annoyance is if you wanna restore something, you've gotta have this close by because everything's stored on it. So it's, you know, it's, it's up to you. If you have an eight gig, then it's obviously mandatory that you have one of these uh, cause Titanium Backup, I mean, that's two gigs of stuff. That means you have six gigs left, less than six gigs left on your, you know, internal storage, which is un unacceptable for me. But uh, there we go. So apps can be easily granted root access, like signal check. Whenever you hit reset data connection, which she doesn't have the pro version as of yet, it'll say, do you want to grant this root permission? And it'll basically reset our data and force us to connect to like 4GLTE, HSPA plus or whatever. So there you have it. This was how to back up your Moto G, how to install custom recovery, how to sync your stuff to the cloud. Oh, and um, Titanium Backup, if you don't have, if you wiped your internal storage, just go to Menu, Preferences, check Dropbox, make sure it's checked, and then go back to Schedules and hit Run. And it'll say Downloading, and it'll say like 200 megabytes or two gigs or whatever you had uploaded, it'll download all that to your internal storage. We didn't wipe our internal storage, so if we run it, it'll just basically say, you know, checking, cleaning, done. It won't even take it but a second. 
So there you have it, folks. And then whenever you move your data folder from your SD card right here to your internal storage, you can hit restore previous backup. And there you have it. We have it right there. We can hit 1115, okay. And then we can just tap to restore the widget, hit this button, hit create. We'll have to choose like how we want our clock set up, but when, you, when you're done, hit the little checkbox, and then you'll see that we have all of our stuff back. Our calendar, just press on that, and there you go, there's your calendar. All of our Nova Launcher settings are restored. If Plume got put back on here, we can press on Plume, and then down here, there'll be a little option that says Import. It imported operation successfully. Now when we open Plume up again, Bam, we're logged in, all of our settings are there, everything is done. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a huge favor and give it a thumbs up. That's all I ask. Trust me, it helps the channel out more than you probably know, and I greatly appreciate it. If you're new here, please subscribe. I will have more videos on the Moto G, and I already have a few other videos on the Moto G on this channel already, so make sure you check them out. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I also have Facebook, Google+, and etc., but I use Twitter and Instagram the most. That's how you'll learn about upcoming videos that I'm working on. I tweeted earlier that I was working on this video, so if you were following me, you would know that this video was coming out today. This is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out. For those of you that stuck around to the end and are watching this right now, I thank you very, very much. I'm sure there won't be very many of you. Please leave a comment if you do. But anyways... Um, if you go to your settings and then you go to storage, if you wiped your internal storage and installed the ROM from the SD card, this will be clean. You'll have a clean slate, but we didn't do that. So all of our stuff is still here. If we go down here, you'll see USB storage, and this is without installing any other apps. This is just simply installing CyanogenMod 11. Now we have our SD card here. If we want to remove this safely, we need to go to unmount SD card and then press OK. And it says it will be unmounted. Now it's safely unmountable. Pull it out. It will say removed SD card, but you can just clear that notification and it's gone. There you have it.